Hey everyone, this is Fulton at Laser, Loot Air Student Radio. This is my music room for Tuesday, uh, January 19th, 2021. Um, first off, as always, I want to start from land acknowledgement for the Snohomish, Skagit, Sklam peoples. I constantly thrive, survive, and uh, profit off their land, and it has been stolen. Anyways, this week, um, I listen to a mix of CDs and records, not as many records as CDs. Um, but first, Jimi Hendrix Experience, Electric Ladyland. Great uh, remaster from 1997, um, except uh, Rainy Day Dream Away skips. Um, I have to clean the disc some more because it was working fine in my car. But, um, you know, it's Jimmy Coffee. <laughs> hey, man. Um, yeah. Kanye West, Graduation. One of the greatest uh, hip hop, rap, uh, whatever albums of all time, in my opinion. Uh, just really strong. I kind of grew up on this one. My brother was super into it. Um, but yeah, I also got the poster hanging up, um, on my wall, somewhere over there. Um, it's just an amazing album, very consistent, the production's great. Um, as I was listening to Salib, uh, Quelly's, um, The Beautiful Struggle while I was driving the other day, and I was like, wow. There's this span between, like, 2003 and 2008 when, uh, hip-hop rap, um, wasn't, like, taking the gangsta form, as, uh, Kanye has stated. Um, you know, taking stuff uh, in a different form than, you know, what mainstream society thinks rap is. Um, up next, Kind of Blue, Miles Davis. Um, this is a remaster from the 90s. Has the alternate take of Flamenco Sketches, which is pretty funny. Um, but, you know, essential classic jazz album. You don't know it, you should know it. Um, Sueños, I can't pronounce the other name, but this is like Andean... Um, folk, dance, party music, um, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's really fun, it's really engaging, it's super relaxing, um, interesting rhythms, uh, it just makes you want to dance and, uh, hang out, you know, it, it finds a nice balance, uh, between foreground and background, um, kind of like Jacob Man Big Band, it's a example my friend Eric King, uh, uses, um, they just, uh, they explain it as, you know, foreground and background music, and that's exactly what this is. Um, up next, this is a promo CD that no one enjoyed at uh, the station last year, but Robbers. Um, they're a uh, Mexican-like rock band. It says, uh, recommended if you like Arctic Monkeys, Liam Gallagher, and Pearl Jam. You can definitely taste a lot of Pearl Jam, but the vocals are a tad goofy. Um, overall, it's just a really fun and exciting rock um, EP. So yeah, this is Robbers. It's called Endless Perspectives. You know, I'm excited for what they do next. Um, they just need to do some refining. And then, um, I think I've shown this before, but um, One Day Zacco uh, by The Real Sounds, uh, or The Real Sounds of Africa. Um, this is essentially uh, the Isley Brothers, but African, in my opinion. Uh, but it's like, they're known for... Um, taking lots of different um, influences from all over Africa, specifically Zimbabwe. It's just amazing what they do. Um, they're like jam tracks. There's only um, six tracks on this album. And the average time, uh, doing some mental math here, is like, it's between five and nine minutes is the average track length. There's one that's 13 minutes long on here. And they're just grooving. It's so amazing, it's so tight, it's concise. The real sounds. Um, I don't know if you can find them on streaming services at all, but. They're super fun and just groovy. Um, I, don't, I need to dig into more African music. I'm just stuck to the staples. Um, you know, like, uh, oh God. Fela Kuti, um, King Sunny Aid, and um, the infamous compilation, not infamous, famous compilation. Um, um, oh boy, it's escape, escaping me. Um, Soweto, an indestructible beat of Soweto. Very basic stuff, but very groovy stuff. I, re I recommend checking um, all of them out. So, uh, King Fela Tutti, um, Indestructible Beat of, so of Soweto, and uh, King Sunny 8. Pulled this. Primus, suck on this. I've shown this before. This is a repress um, for Record Store Day. I got this off of uh, the subreddit, um, Vinyl Collectors. The guys somehow came through with it. Very impressed. Uh, shout out to them. Um, but yeah. I have every single Primus record, and I have a video called the Primus Special that's up. Um, it's quite old. I released it back in, I believe it's September, 
That's my father yawning and coughing. Um, he's a smoker, as I've said before. Um, up next, I can't really say much about Primus that record. Sons of Caius. Um, this is a bootleg of uh, Caius, Josh Homme, John Garcia. I showed their stuff the other day, um, last week. This is a bootleg of their very first um, album, when they weren't just Caius, but Sons of Caius. Um, this is an amazing album, uh, especially considering how young they are. They're playing hardcore punk, according to them, but you get the tinges of the stoner metal and the desert rock, as it become, becomes known as. Um, this has songs like Cats and Jammer, Love Has Passed Me By, um, and Black Widow, and Isolation, Desolation, Deadly Kiss. I think those all appear on um, Wretch, the album that basically refined this. This is kind of just like a small release. Um, the original press, there's only 500 of them. Um, in an interview with Josh Homme in the 90s, he says he has about 150 of them. Who knows how true that is today? Um, but anyways, this is like just essential. It's great. It's, um, for a bootleg, it sounds really amazing. There's just a lot of static at some points. Um, I think it's just how it was cut, personally, but it's got this nice little insert lyric sheet that duplicates the original, um, you know, with their old logo. It's pretty cool. I really enjoy it. And like, ah, the photo. The photo right here is awesome. Really fun to think about and look at. Um, personally, I prefer Caius with um, Scott Reeder as their bassist, but nevertheless, they're an amazing band. Um, who plays bass on this one? Chris. Chris, um, that's Nick Oliveri. I'm not exactly sure who Chris is. i do some research. But then he, here's the green vinyl. Um, really solid bootleg. There it is. You know, it's beautiful. Um, considering bootlegs these days, you know, sometimes they're absolute crap. But this one sounds really well. I'm very impressed. I've had it for a couple years now. Um, no, uh, no chances of departing with it anytime soon, at least. Um, up next, Beat by King Crimson, your uh, second 80s album after Discipline. Uh, this is a repress from last year. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't talk this much. I've probably heard that joke before. Um, but yeah, this one's influenced by uh, Beat Authors. Uh, my dad's blowing his nose. Um, Neil, Neil Jack and me, Torian Tink, and Tangier, um, The Howler, Requiem, um, Neurotica even, you know, as the chaos of what happens when you're on the road, and um, Kerouac as, uh, you know, Dean Moriarty's Hell Paradise as they're going hundreds of miles per hour and uh, crashing the inauguration. That's, uh, that's what Neuro Neurotica is, except in a New York City format. Anyways, you know, great album. Uh, it's the most strained King Crimson album from what I've read, um, specifically for that lineup. Um, of Adrian Blue, Robert Fripp, Tony Levin, and Bill Bruford. Plug for Tony Levin, he's coming out with a picture book soon. Uh, Pictures from the Road, I believe it's called. Check out his Instagram, it's just Tony Levin, uh, L-E-V-I-N-T-O-N-M-Y. Um, you know, first name, last name first. Um, it looks really nice, I might pick it up. Um, yeah, it's amazing. And I do recommend reading Bill Bruford's autobiography. I talked about that um, a long time ago. Um, very opinionated, but very good. But nevertheless, a great album. Um, I love I love King Crimson. Definitely one of my favorite bands. Uh, shout out to my dad for getting them in, for getting me into them. Um, but yeah, Beat is definitely an interesting place. I wouldn't recommend starting there. Um, it's definitely after you've listened to uh, In the Court of Crimson King, Red, um, Lark's Tongue Snaspic, um, and Discipline. Definitely like listen to Discipline and listen to that. You know, it's it's a sequel. It's kind of a like an A minus movie sequel or a B plus, um, but it, it's really good. They dig some groovy things on there. Um, definitely the second side's a little rougher than the first, but it's good. Um, I don't know much else to say. Um, you know, King Crimson just makes me happy um, and introspective at the same time. Um, while calculated, um, they're a very intelligent band um, that has stood the test test of time. Um, just Robert Fripp, at least. He's always been active. Um, he's taken breaks from Crim, um, but it's, you know, they consider it his child, um, critics and fans alike. And yeah, King Crimson is definitely, I think, one of the best progressive rock bands in the whole world. And I recommend anyone who wants to give 
recommend them to anyone who's like looking to get into music a little bit more or uh, progressive rock so definitely check out King Crimson um, if you want some tracks uh, 21st century schizoid man is a central cat food from uh, in the wake of Poseidon uh, what more red nightmare red and starless from red um, Lark's Tongues and Aspic, uh, Part 1 and 2, uh, Exiles and Lament from that same album, um, Fracture from Starless by Mont Black, Formentera Lady from Islands, um, just listen to Lizard as a whole, um, let's see, what else, um, yeah, you know, that's the original lineup and that's what I really recommend, um, they're a great band, I love them so much, um, just listen to them, you'll enjoy it. Um, and then I listen, I don't know if I've shown this yet, I listened to, from last week, um, Moving Pictures by Rush. I got this at a garage sale, this is the first pressing. Um, great album, Essential Rush, it's the only Rush album I've gotten into. Um, but yeah, you know, the first side has, uh, Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, y YYZ, uh, Limelight, and then side two has The Camera Eye, Witch Hunt, and Vital Signs. All very solid, uh, Rush songs. Side two is definitely not the popular side. Side one is very poppy um, and well known, uh, but it's a great album all the way through. Then uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I, yeah, my memory's coming back to me. Theo Katzman, Heartbreak Hits. Uh, this is his second album. Um, it's a breakup album. It's a heartbreak album, um, based on all these other things, and also the duality between light and darkness. Um, light instrumentation, dark lyrics. Plain Jean Heroin hit really hard. Um, first time in a while, kind of funny, right? Um, yeah, great album, pressed amazingly. Can't go wrong with Theo Katzman. Might still be available on this website. Do not buy it on eBay, Amazon, Discogs, because people will charge you out of their minds. And finally, I've shown this before, Miles Davis and the Modern Jazz Giants. I can't get enough of this album. I uh, frequently put it on. Milt Jackson's just a genius. Um, phrasing between the vibes. Miles Davis talking. Um, I don't know, it's around the same time as the great, uh, the first uh, great quintet. So, steaming, relaxing, um, working. Those three albums, I'm going to get those soon um, because they're just amazing. Anyhow, this is Fulton from Laser, Loot Air Student Radio, a Circuit Lutheran University student-run radio station. This has been my music room for Tuesday, uh, the 19th, beginning of J-term for us POU students. Uh, best of luck today, everyone. Um, hope your classes go well. Go well. Um, this is kind of a bit, a bit shorter, which is kind of nice, but I'm going to stop it at exactly 13 seconds.